Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. We want to thank you all for the comments and the questions that you give us. Uh, it's actually today's topic is one of those questions. However, we do not have the time to answer all the questions, but we use them as reference uh, to do videos. So as I said, this is one of them. And today's topic is bottom watering. How does it work? Now cue the intro. Let's go. Once again, welcome. So, first question is, can a plant be fertilized when water from the bottom? Now, the quick answer is yes, it can. But our recommendation is to dilute the fertilizer to be able to do that. All right, and by diluting it, what do you mean? What I mean is add more water than the recommended dosage. So, if you have to have, let's say, two cups yeah. of fertilizer for five liters of water then you just add one to five liters of water instead so dilute it to almost half all right i, I want to have another one then so <laughs> how come is it like you're hurting them too much or, or what, that's what's... exactly what we're going to talk about so okay. all right all right so and, and also, what is bottom watering? What is it? How, how does it work? You say, yeah, let's just, you can just water it uh, like from, from beneath or, or so, but what is it? So uh, normal, normally we water from, from the top and let the water uh, drain through the soil right. down into the bottom. But when we talk about uh, bottom watering, mm -hmm. it's when you add the water from the bottom. It's okay. an easier than that. One easy way to, is just to show you the, the most common way of bottom watering is that you have a saucer like this and you have a pot. Now to be able to bottom water it's really really important that you have a pot that has drainage holes. Now these are, that's these holes in the bottom of the pot because the water needs to be able to reach the soil somehow so what you're doing is that you take the saucer, you have the pot on here, and you add the water into the saucer. You just fill the saucer with water, and over time what's happening here is that through something called capillary force, which basically means that the water is going to be transporting itself up into the soil here. It's actually going to be sucked up by the soil. So after a few minutes or up to an hour, all of this water is going to be sucked up into the soil. So that is bottom watering, that you're not watering on top here, you're actually watering from the bottom of the pot. And this works? This works perfectly. It's, it's a very, very good way of watering because what you're actually doing is you, you're eliminating the main problem with indoor plants. And nine out of 10 plants die from too much water. And what usually happens is that when you water your plant, you maybe think, ah, it's very, very dry. I need to add more than I usually do. Yeah, that's me. What happens is that all of that water, a lot of that water gets soaked up by the soil, but the excess water goes down and stays down here in the bottom of the pot. That water actually kills a lot of plants. But if you bottom water, it's quite simple because you have to have the drainage holes. We always recommend drainage holes no matter how you water. But you can see in, on the saucer here that, okay, there's no more water in the saucer, which means there is no water standing in the pot either because it would go out into the saucer here. Right. So by bottom watering, we are eliminating the most common problem or way to kill your plants. So it's a good thing. Great, great. And that, and that actually is so what you're saying here is that if I have a, a plant at home and I water from above and I see that, oh, the, the saucer or the tray is almost filled up with water, it's time to like take it away. You, because that's Usually you don't have a saucer. What you have is an outer pot instead. So when you water, you cannot see that there are standing water in the outer pot. But 
if you want to save your plants, the easy way is just to every time you've watered, wait a little while, a couple of minutes, then take out the inner pot and look in the outer pot. If it's standing water there, take away that excess water and put it back. Then you've saved your plants. But if you have a saucer, it's more easy to see if there is water left. Because you'll see that inside. Another way of doing it is to take all of your plants and maybe fill up your sink and put them in the sink. Let them stand for a while and then you take them away again. You just remove it from the saucer or the outer pot and just put it in the sink. You can actually make sure that it's standing in water for a couple of minutes up to half an hour or something. Because the soil can just absorb a certain amount of water. Nice. Then the excess water goes down again into the bottom. So when it's soaked up as much as it can, you remove it from the sink and you place it in your outer pot again. But always, always, a couple of minutes later, check the inner pot again to see if some of that excess water has gone through the pot. So always do that extra check to make sure that you're not killing your plant. But by bottom watering, you're just removing an obstacle that could be there by just, it's easier to see that you have excess water. Take that away. Interesting. This also works in some types of uh, self-watering pots, yeah. uh, like this one. If you water uh, directly to the container, and, um, and in, in, in this one you, you want to have water in the container at all times, usually. So then it's, it's really important to, to dilute uh, the, the nutrients right. if you bottom water right. like this. Right. But I mean, so, I mean, I have a little struggle here because should I always bottom water or should I from time to time make sure that the soil is, is getting wet or what's your opinion about that? I, I understand it is different from different plants, obviously. But I mean, in some way, there needs to be a frequent watering on top. Or how do you... Well, what you can say that uh, if we're talking in, in general, in general absolutely. Uh, most indoor tropical plants can be watered from the top or could be watered from the bottom. Uh, they will like it eat either way. So, but we're removing one of those obstacles we talked about earlier. Yeah. But, uh, but there is a couple of things that you have to consider when bottom watering and we'll go into that. But to be able to understand that, we need to be able to understand, because the question here was, can you fertilize when bottom watering? Mm -hmm. And that's another thing here, because you need to fertilize your plants. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really important, as we always say on this channel, fertilizer is not no, it's not. It's not food. It's not food. It's not food. Uh, no. okay. so it's but do you do you recommend that you you can use either bottom watering or top watering? It works fine in general with like yeah, both ways are both ways. Are good. Yeah, but you also as watering take, your plant. But you but also take away, as you said, nine out of ten indoor <laughs> plants dies because of overwatering. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so that leads on to the next question that I have, and that is, what is fertilizer for the plant? Yeah. Like, really, what, what is it? We understand that it is something that we need yeah. to add, but what is it? As we said, it, it's not the food for the plant. The plant makes its own food by uh, photosynthesis. That's the food to the plant. So you Sugar can, and starches. Yeah. It produces its own sugars, yeah. which is the food for the, the plant. The nutrients would be more like uh, vitamins for humans. So something we need, but not as much as food. We need the important vitamins to, to be able to survive. But yeah. they, they help different processes within the plant. To, it, it helps the plant itself to just function more perfectly. So if it has a nutrient deficiency, some of the functions within the plant, let's say uh, transporting the water from the roots up to the, to the leaves, mm -hmm. by adding nutrients, we're actually helping that process. So if it has a nutrient deficiency, it might not be able to transport as much water. 
but it's still not the food, it's not what it needs to survive, but it helps those processes that it's important for the complete plant. <laughs> I understand, yeah. I understand. But, but if we take a look at fertilizer, because the question here was, can we bottom water and fertilize at the same time? Does that work? We need to understand what fertilizer is and how it works. Now, fertilizer, we usually add that as a water soluble. We, we add fertilizer to the water and then we water our plants. And in that type of system, the fertilizer is actually salt. It, is, it gets distributed to the roots and to the root ball as salt. What that means is that when we add fertilizer to the water, it dilutes, it, it, it breaks down into salt and it becomes one with the water. And it has positive and negatively charged ions. Now those ions are quite important because when we water, normally we water on top of the soil here. And when we do that, when the water goes through, the nutrients stay because they grab a hold of the soil or the particles we've planted our, our, our plants in. Uh, they have also a positive and negatively charged surface. So the nutrients get caught and tangled and binds together with the soil and the water goes through. It, it also soaks some of the water, but the excess, wa excess water goes down into the bottom of the pot. Now, this, this type of function of, of capturing those ions, we call CEC, cation exchange capacity. So different types of soils, different types of substrates we use. It can be peat, it can be pumice, it can be perlite. They have different abilities or to be able to hold those nutrients and that's called CEC. So if you see that a soil has a high cation exchange capacity, it means that it can bind and hold lots of nutrients. If it has a low capacity, it cannot hold on to those. So meaning if we have, let's say pumice, it has quite a low cation exchange capacity. If you have planted in only pumice and nothing else, lots of those nutrients when you water will go straight through the pot and go down to the bottom and get thrown away with the excess water. But if you have a highly peated soil, almost all of those nutrients that go through will be captured by that soil. And that is usually a positive thing, but it can also be a negative thing because you can have too much nutrients in a soil or you can have not enough nutrients. That's why we usually have a mixture of different type of substrates in our soil. And then to, just to add, we, we always recommend that you uh, water your nutrients to your plants. There is uh, substrates you can buy that you put small sticks and put them into the soil mm -hmm. and then water, and they're supposed to, uh, uh, what's it called, Abs absorb. Absorb. Absorb yeah. by the, in, in combined with the water. Mm -hmm. uh, our experience is that that doesn't work all the time and it's, it's, it's not as good as watering in your nutrients. All so right. if, uh, if you just, just do it with the water, it's usually better. Great. Uh, if you guys want to know more how fertilizer works, we have a video and I'll put the link right up here. So guys, uh, is there a big difference if I fertilize from above, like water from the above, or if I water with fertilizer from the bottom? Well, we, to start, let's just say we, we only fertilize when the plant is filling well. So if you have a plant that's not filling well, or uh, if, yeah, if it's not growing, it's not, then you shouldn't fertilize. You should take care of the plant and see what's the problem with the plant first. All right. So that's very important. Just only fertilize when the plant's feeling well, when it looks like... That, that's one of the things we say on this channel yeah. a lot. It, it's usually never a solution to a problem that, to, to a plant that is feeling sad to add nutrients. You're probably just 
harming the plant even more. Because nutrient deficiency, yes, it's real, it could be that, but it's probably 10 other things before it's nutrient deficiency. So never add fertilizer to try and help the plant feel better. Find the problem to why it's feeling sad or bad, rectify that, and then you add fertilizer when it's feeling good. Uh, and also, another thing can be when it's active. When it's showing you growth, it needs fertilizer. When it's dormant, when it's not growing, stop fertilizing, because you could add too much. As we said before, fertilizer is salt, basically. So if it cannot absorb a lot of those salts, they are still in the pot. So if you add more fertilizer, you're actually harming the roots because it cannot drink salt water. Uh, that's, a, that's a really, really common thing. And I think that I've done it a million times. I'm like, I'm looking at the plant and I'm like, well, I think I should add a little bit more. Like yeah. and you say in the beginning in, in this uh, talk here that we, we should dilute it and you should that. And then you feel inside like, well, maybe I should just add a little bit more. I, I, I listen, but I don't listen. Like, so it's really important what you're saying here to dilute it because of all of these things and never uh, add fertilizer when a plant is feeling uh, when, not good, not when well. When there's something if, wrong if with it. there's something yeah. wrong, all right, all right. And, and never so, do it uh, if, if the plant is really, really dried up. Okay. If you have forgotten to water your plants. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Don't start with watering and fertilizing. H how come? Why, why because don't... it's just the same as before, the salts and all that. If, if, if the plant really needs water, mm -hmm. just give it water oh, okay. first then you can add fertilizer okay that's uh, okay. important one way of doing that is that when you want to add fertilizer you can always start by watering your plants with just water first take away the excess water and then water it again with some fertilizer in the water because then the roots are starting to get activated it's getting water it's starting to become activated and when you water again with the nutrients, the nutrients will still be binded and absorbed by the soil, and then it can take those nutrients and do something with it. So that's one way of just water it before and then water it again, if you have a plant that is really, really dry. Yeah. Yeah. But another thing is, of course, you have different types of fertilizer. We, we usually recommend a water-soluble inorganic fertilizer that's what we use the most but i know that it is extremely popular and it's growing to use for instance organic fertilizer mm -hmm. and it's perfect if you can do that if you have the ability to create your own fertilizer now we said before that if you fertilize when you bottom water your your plants you should dilute the fertilizer Yes, if it is an inorganic fertilizer, because inorganic fertilizers are usually quite concentrated. But if you have an organic fertilizer, if you've mixed it yourself or if you've bought an ready to use organic fertilizer, you don't have to do that because the organic fertilizer are not that concentrated. So then you can just follow the instructions on the box and use the recommended dosage even if you're watering from the bottom. And now we come to the, the conclusion here because you, all, you, you asked us before, so what's really the difference there? It, be, why do we dilute the inorganic fertilizer? Well, if you mix up fertilizer in, in your can with water and you water from above, what happens automatically is that those fertilizers will be distributed, since the water is everywhere, in all of the soil. But if you water from the bottom, if you have this and you, and you add the fertilized water here, the, the water mix with fertilizer, what happens is that the soil will start to get wet from the bottom up. The capillary force, the the action that water can do, it can actually climb on surfaces. It has to do with the bindings in between the molecules of the water. It can actually start to climb and, and it does. It will climb up the soil, but it starts from the bottom and it goes upwards. 
So most of the nutrients will automatically be in the bottom of the pot here. Because if you have a soil that has, the, has a high cation ion exchange capacity, the soil down here will take most of the nutrients. The water will continue to climb and there will be some nutrients up here, but not as much as here. And if we consider where are the roots, where are the roots in the pot? They're in the bottom, or most of the roots are in the bottom because that's where most of the water is. So that's why we dilute it, because there is a small risk of the bottom part of the soil here gets too much nutrients where the roots are, and that will damage the roots. Or it will hinder it to move water because you have water, uh, salt water in the bottom here. But when we water from the top, you will get a more evenly distributed nutrients in all of the pot. But then you have another problem. If uh, we, we say that it, it works perfectly to water from the bottom, but sometimes you also need to water from the top. And it has to do with those buildup with, with, with salt. If you have a lot of salt that's starting to build up in the bottom here, which can happen, as we said j just now, if you take this pot, water it with just water from the top, let it rinse through, go out through the drainage holes in the bottom, you're actually removing some of those excess salts that are binded in, in, the, in the soil. Now, you can do this with a normally watered plant, mm -hmm. but it's even more important to do it sometimes if you bottom water, because you can have that salt buildup in the bottom here. You get that salt buildup even from normal watering, so you should do it all the time. But if you always water from up here, you're not always watering with fertilizer you're sometimes watering without Absolutely. and then you're draining out those excess salts naturally, naturally. Yeah, yeah. but if you bottom water they are not going to be drained out as much right. yeah so just to summarize we can say the quick answer was can we fertilize when we bottom water mm -hmm. yes we can but we dilute the inorganic fertilizer. If you use organic fertilizer, you might not have to do that because it's not that concentrated. But if you bottom water and fertilize in that way, sometimes, a couple of times a year, you need to make sure that the whole system gets a little bit drained from salts. And you do that by watering with just water from the top, just those couple of times. Then you can start to use bottom watering again, but you do that to get away with those excess salts. Thank you so much, guys. This really helped me a lot, and I hope that it helped you guys as well. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps our channel a lot. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please do so as well, and hit the bell so that you get a notification every time we put up new content. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos, and actually sometimes a little bit more. Now, until next time. Hi, Hello. Hello.